Mastodon, the popular FOSS and federated social network, recently released a security update to fix critical vulnerabilities in the software. So if you're running a Mastodon instance yourself, you might wanna pause the video and go and update your server right away. Or if you're a user on a Mastodon instance that has been updated, you might wanna start spamming the admin to update their server so that everybody and their mother doesn't get hacked. Now, there were several CVEs that were part of this update, but the most critical vulnerability is CVE 2023-36460, which has a severity rating of 9.9 .9 out of 10. And if that's not enough to drive home just how serious this CVE is, it's already gotten a cute nickname from some people online. Toot Root. <laughs> And as some of you know, usually only the worst vulnerabilities are going to end up getting cute nicknames like this. Now, for those of you who aren't too familiar with Mastodon and you're wondering, oh my gosh, why is this such a big deal of software I've not even heard of? It's one of those decentralized social media platforms that are all the rage right now, similar to Lemmy, except Mastodon is more of a Twitter clone than a Reddit clone. So there's no centralized Mastodon website like you would have with Twitter.com. Different people just run their own instances of this site or of this software. And you can create an account on whichever instance you want to be your home, or you can run your own instance. And there's different instances that different people are running that can federate with one another in order to share content. And right now, Mastodon is actually one of the more popular federated social media platforms with 14 million users across more than 20,000 instances. Now, this vulnerability was actually discovered during a security audit of the Mastodon software by Cure53, a German pen testing group. And they were paid to do this audit by the Mozilla Foundation, who actually run their own Mastodon instance themselves called Mozilla.social. So we really should be thanking Mozilla for basically funding the discovery and the secure disclosure of this vulnerability since they hired a real pen testing group and not just some random guy off the internet. Uh, and of course, this isn't the first time that Mozilla has helped with improving the security of open source projects either. So big ups to Mozilla. And just to give you a little bit of good news before you panic over these CVEs, so far, I don't think that any of them have actually been exploited in the wild by anyone malicious. And there's not really a lot of details right now about how to actually perform the hack. Like if we take a look at the publications on Cure or Cure 53's site, they don't even have an article written up about the pen tests that they did on Mastodon so far. And if we take a look at the GitHub page, there's not a whole lot of information about this critical CV either. But based off the limited data here, you know, things like the fact that the bug is called arbitrary file creation through media attachments, and the fact that the attack complexity is rated as really low right now, it kind of makes me think that the attack is going to involve making a post or a toot to Mastodon since it's kind of like Twitter, but instead of making tweets, you make toots. <laughs> anyway, you attach a file to your toot, like an extension, that's really some kind of script. Maybe it's a PHP file that contains some system commands to get a reverse shell on the box, you know, just kind of spitball in here. And then, you execute that file that gets uploaded to the server somehow, possibly by going to the page that has your attachment on it. Like for example, I'm here on the cyberplace.social Mastodon instance, and we can see this toot by memory leech has some attachments to it, right? If we take a look at these attachments, we can see this one here, for example, the man saying get out, is hosted on a specific page on that instance if you you know follow it all the way down there well if we were to visit this page directly of course it just shows us the picture but if this was really some kind of php file or other script file it would then make that script execute 
on the server. And if it was malicious, potentially would give you a reverse shell or uh, whatever. Just using this as an example, I'm not saying that this is exactly how the um, toot root CVE or the toot root vulnerability works, but if it is about this easy to just get arbitrary file execution on someone's servers with the same permission as the Mastodon server from a simple toot, then it probably wouldn't take much more for you to root someone's box or at the very least, just get access to that Mastodon admin account for that instance. And then you would be able to make post as the administrator or as any other user's account that is registered on the instance, which is probably the main thing that a hacker would want to do after compromising this box. We could see a repeat of what Plugwalk Joe did on Twitter, sending out tweets from high profile accounts like, yeah, Obama is totally going to double your Bitcoin for a limited time if you send it to this address. That sounds totally legit. But this could also be a vector for a hacker to distribute malicious software that when installed would compromise end user systems as well. And right now would actually have been the perfect time for a hacker to do something like this. Because with all the social media upheaval that's going on, with the changes that are being made to Reddit and especially the changes that are being made to Twitter, a lot of new people are signing up to services like Mastodon to get away from the billionaire dick measuring contest that has broken out between the Zuck and Elon Musk. And you've gotta imagine that most of the people who are leaving Twitter for other websites probably are not the most tech savvy people. They might be really confused by the whole concept of the Fediverse. And if there's an announcement from an admin on their instance that they created an account on, telling them that they need to install some additional program to get things to work properly, or maybe they could send out toots that appear to not be loading media. And it's like, oh yeah, you've got to install this special codec in order to see the content of these toots, right? That old trick. Uh, it would probably work and get a lot of people to go through installing those malicious programs. And that could easily allow the hacker to gain control of a sizable botnet. Several million people have joined Mastodon just in the last year since Elon acquired Twitter. So this vulnerability, the way it was discovered and the way that patching these vulnerabilities is being handled is a really great example of how security is handled in decentralized open source projects. And we can contrast this against the proprietary centralized approach that most people are using. So let's say a similar vulnerability or a similar set of vulnerabilities like these were affecting Twitter. Since Twitter is so much more active compared to Mastodon, and I would say that the users on Twitter are a lot less tech savvy than the people that are on Mastodon and therefore a lot more vulnerable to social engineering, a CVE like this or a vulnerability like this that's exploited on Twitter would probably end up making hackers a lot more money. Remember, Plugwalk Joe made over 100K in crypto just from tweeting from famous people's accounts that he would double their Bitcoin. Now, being that Twitter is a multi-billion dollar company, they have the money to hire penetration testers on a fairly regular basis to pen test their software and their infrastructure. It's not like this with Mastodon, where I guess we got kind of lucky that Mozilla was interested in using Mastodon themselves as like a social media outlet. And they probably said, hey, shouldn't we make sure that this stuff is actually secure before we kind of make it a main way to announce things for the Mozilla Foundation? And so they went ahead and paid Cure53 to do that. Um, and with Twitter, they probably even have an internal red team that does those kinds of security audits that Cure53 did on a regular basis. And in addition to all of the planned internal audits and third-party audits that Twitter does, they also have a bug bounty program where they will actually pay people for responsibly disclosing vulnerabilities to the company so that they can fix them before hackers maliciously exploit them. Although one thing that I will say about Twitter's bug bounty program is that the reward here for finding and disclosing a critical bug is way too low, in my opinion. I mean, remember, the critical rating is 
usually saved for the really nasty vulnerabilities like Toot Root that lets you take over a vulnerable server uh, or this other critical vulnerability that Mastodon patched to prevent a cross-site scripting attack through O-Embed preview cards. If a hacker were to exploit vulnerabilities like this on Twitter, then they could make way more money just from running a crypto scam or hell, they could probably just sell the vulnerability to some other hacker on the dark web for a lot more than the $15,000 that Twitter is gonna offer you to disclose it to them. Now, even though I obviously prefer the open source and decentralized kind of bizarre model to the centralized cathedral model of Twitter, there is one distinct advantage that I can't deny Twitter has, and that is better deployment of security patches. Since Twitter is just one company, it's a lot easier for them to coordinate updating all of their servers around the world because they're all being controlled by one company or you know maybe they have a European and an American IT team. But with Mastodon, each instance needs to be updated by every person that's running that instance, each individual person running an instance. And the majority of people who are running Mastodon instances are just doing so as volunteers. So I imagine that patching vulnerabilities isn't necessarily as important to them as it is to people at Twitter whose job it is to patch these servers. So as we move to a more decentralized model of the web and social media, the digital literacy is gonna become all the more important for the end users of the software. The best thing that you can do right now as a Mastodon user is to check that the instance you're on is actually updated, that they're running version 4.1.4 or later, and usually you can see this in the bottom left-hand corner on desktop. And then you can go ahead and cross-reference this with their GitHub page to make sure that they're actually running the latest version and that it has no known vulnerabilities. And of course, the same basic principles still apply. Don't click on sussy links or install sussy software. But let me know your thoughts in the comment below about this security model, Mastodon versus Twitter security model, which one you think is really better. And be sure to like and share this video in order to hack the algorithm, follow me on Odyssey, and have a great rest of your day.